Before anything else, I would like to congratulate Randall Chongson and Marvin Guillermo for successfully organizing ICON 2021. Grabe no, in spite of the pandemic, they continue to push forward in their advocacy para makatulong sa maraming tao. So I'd like to congratulate you also for joining this event. Sana marami kayong matutunan sa maraming magaling na speaker na pinagsama-sama nila Randall Chongson. You know, I am not a financial person. I am not in the real estate business. I am not also in the stock market. So I will not be able to help you by telling you where to invest your money para lumaki siya. Instead, I am an entrepreneur. Ang pwede kong gawin is turuan kayo kung paano magnegosyo so that makagawa kayo ng pera na later you can invest in the different mediums that the speakers will discuss with you today. Ang title ng talk ko is Finding Opportunities Amidst Calamities. This is my COVID-19 story. I will share with you kung ano ang ginawa namin through this pandemic so that we can survive and even thrive. Alam mo, our farm today is even bigger. So, what people see as a curse became a blessing to us. I am not saying that I am happy that COVID-19 happened. I am not because of all the deaths that has happened. But let me give you a little more background about myself para maintindihan mo kung saan galing yung mga prinsipyong ginamit ko and then para ma-appreciate mo ang ituturo ko sa'yo. Aside from being known as a farmer and a businessman from Bukidnon, I am also known as a person who left an executive position in Hewlett-Packard in 1998 to move my family to Bukidnon where wala kaming kaibigan and kamag-anak and made them live in a 20-foot container van. I cannot tell you how I came up with the decision because it would take some time and I want to be able to focus my talk on the learnings that I have had in the pandemic. You know, when we moved to Bukidnon, wala kaming pera because I resigned. And that 20-foot container van was the only thing I could afford to be able to start a life. We were able to borrow money from the family of my wife to buy a farm. And the picture that you see, may kita mo, is barren land. The only reason why yan ang binili namin was because it was the only thing we could afford. We were able to borrow enough to start a hog growing farm for Monterey. So we became a subcontractor. And initially, I was excited because to the mind of many people, a subcontractor of a big company or maybe a franchisee is a business that will make you rich. Until I started to operate the business. I realize na hindi ka magugutom pero hindi ka rin yayaman kasi ang laki-laki ng investment na linagay mo and ang liit-liit ng kita. And because of this, I realize that I will not be able to give my family a better life. So this led me to a state of depression. When I was going through that emotion, I decided to read the Bible because I was trying to look for comfort from the Lord. I was hoping that He can give me the peace that I needed then. As I continued to read the Bible, you know, I realized something very important. You know, I realized ko that the people we call prophets were actually businessmen and many of them were farmers. Tapos, meron pa sa kanilang dayo. And amazingly, they were able to become successfully rich in spite of all their disadvantages. So one day, sabi ko sa sarili ko, doon kailangan mo maintindihan kung ano alam nila. And so I told myself, doon total wala nang mawawala sa'yo kasi wala na lahat. Walang mawawala if you now read the Bible as a business book, which I did. Alam mo, when I started to read it as a business book and committed to the Lord that I will obey everything that He will say, you know, amazing things started to happen. Opportunities open. Walang perang nahulog sa langit. But there were just great opportunities that came into our life that brought us to where we are today. Let me share with you some of the things that has happened as a result of using the Bible as a business book. Remember the container van that 
we converted into a house. Today, our house is this. God gave us a better house many years after. And remember the barren land that I started with? Today, it is a lush forest. And inside that forest, we grow high-value crops. We grow different livestock aside from hogs. And we continue to build the garden that God has given us. Alam mo, when the lockdown happened last year, noong March 2020, I was hoping that it would just last for a month. So I was expectant that we will go back to normal soon. As the lockdown continued to drag, I started to panic. Kasi lahat ng restaurant nagsara. And because tourism stopped, pati mga hotel nagsara. And then ang palengke at ang supermarket limited an access, so wala kaming mabentahan ng gulay namin. So yung negosyo na yan, nagsiro. And then in addition to that, the business of Monterey drastically slowed down. Kasi maski meron silang produkto, hindi nila ito ma-deliver because most of the cities were on lockdown. As we were going through all this pain, alam mo, I told myself, here we go again. Now, bakit ko sinabi, here we go again? Because one of the most important thing I learned in life is that calamities will come. And in fact, si Solomon, the wisest man in history, warned us about this in Ecclesiastes 11.12. It reads, Divide your portion to seven or even to eight, for you do not know what misfortune or calamities may occur on the earth. Let me show you what I mean that calamities will come. In 1997 to 1999, the Asian economy collapsed. And it was the time that I moved my family to Bukidnon in 1998. You know, pagdating pa namin sa Bukidnon, El Nino. So it was a very, very rough time for me and my family. However, because of the things I learned from the Bible, we were able to survive that crisis and grow the farm. However, when we have already gained momentum, in 2008 to 2010, the global financial crisis happened. Alam mo, our farm almost closed. Kasi nag-triple ang raw material input cost namin, nag ang labor cost namin, and when I went to my customers asking them for price relief, they said they cannot increase the prices because sila rin nahihirapan. However, some of the greatest lessons that I learned in business came from that crisis. So, natapos na no, yung 2008 global financial crisis, the world recover. And then, 12 years after, COVID-19 came. And it became a global pandemic. And here we are, still struggling through it. Pero alam nyo, I discovered something. That all these calamities that we go through, either economically or from forces of nature, they come in cycles. What do I mean? The picture before you shows you that pandemics have happened in the past. And paulit-ulit siya. In fact, there were more serious pandemics that happened centuries ago. The Black Death killed 200 million people. The Spanish flu killed 50 million people. They come in cycles. And this is true also in business. You will find that business will go through a cycle of abundance and famine, abundance and famine, abundance and famine, paulit-ulit siya. And kaya nga when the lockdown persisted, sabi ko sa sarili ko, here we go again. In order to survive, I did what I would always do when I go to calamities. You know, when I was in HP, we had our fair share of calamities. Whenever the business would struggle, my boss would tell me, we need to look for new and innovative ways to survive this crisis. Ako naman, I would argue back and say, boss, it was the basics that brought us where we are today. And I really believe it will be the basics that will help us survive and grow through this crisis. And this is just a bigger application of the basics. 
So let me share with you the basics that I went back to, the fundamental principles of what brought us relative success. When I was reading the Bible and asking God, Lord, what should I do in order to make the business succeed and give my family a better life? The Bible showed me that God created us to be fruitful. And God revealed this idea sa akin in Genesis 1.28, which reads, God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Do you know that this was the first commandment God gave man? And I really believe in this verse, in His first command, pinakita niya sa atin kung ano ang purpose natin sa buhay. And I believe it is to live in abundance by becoming fruitful. To be fruitful means to have more than enough so that you can be a blessing to others. And when I was studying this verse, I realized that in Genesis 1.28, God was giving us a model of how we should live our lives and how we should do our business. And since the day I realized that God wants me to become fruitful, I have been studying the ways of the plant and have been using it as a model in managing and growing our business. Let me share with you some of the things I've learned. I discovered that the seed contains everything a plant needs to start its life and to become fruitful. Alam ba nyo na ang seed hindi nagre-reklamo na konti lang ang pagkain na pagsisimula niya? Because the essence of becoming fruitful is to make more food from the food you have already. Meaning, ang isang seed gagamitin niya yung pagkain na nasa loob niya to produce roots so that it can make more food. And I learned that business should be the same. Dapat ang negosyo hindi magre-reklamo na konti lang yung pera niya because the essence of business is to make more money from the money you have already. So hindi importante na malaki ka magsimula. Ang importante lang na matuto ka kung paano magpadami ng resources na meron ka na. To be fruitful, a seed needs to be planted in a place suited for it and be nurtured. Anong ibig sabihin na to? Can you grow mango trees in California? Have you ever heard of mango fruits coming from that place? Wala, di ba? Alam mo, if you plant a mango seed in California, naniniwala ako tutubo siya. However, hindi siya mamumunga. Kasi mamumunga lang isang mangga sa isang tropical place. Lugar kung saan mainit. Now, can you take an apple tree and plant it in the Philippines? Lalaki ba siya? Ang sagot, oo. Because at a certain point in my life, I tried it. Nakakuha kami na masarap na apple galing sa Japan and tinanim namin. Lumaki. Pero never namunga. Kasi an apple needs the four season of a temperate country in order to produce fruits. Sa negosyo, it is the same. If you want a business to become profitable, dapat mo siya ilagay sa isang lugar na tama siya. What do I mean? You see, Filipinos tayo. And I really believe na ang blessing natin andito sa bansang ito. However, many people believe that a better life can be found elsewhere. So we migrate around the country. Some people go abroad not realizing that the best opportunity for them may be where they were born. Anong ginawa ng COVID-19? You know, COVID-19 removed all the opportunities that we thought were better. And so we were forced to go home and to ask ourselves, what opportunities do I have around me? However, even if you start an opportunity, Pag hindi mo siya inalagaan, hindi mo siya ninorture, hindi rin niyo siya kikita. Ang dapat gawin ng isang farmer para lumaki ng magandang isang tanim niya is to take care of it and make sure that the roots are strong and healthy. The roots are the most important part of the plant. It decides how big 
it will grow and how fruitful it will become. Now, why is this so? You remember the lesson of photosynthesis in your science class in high school or maybe in college? Diba? Photosynthesis means you take water and carbon dioxide, mix them, and then the plant will be able to produce carbohydrates. Carbon dioxide is unlimited in the air. However, the ability of the plant to get water is limited by its roots. Kaya importante na magpalaki ang tanim ng roots so that it can drive the plant to grow and to become fruitful in the future. The roots represents the plant's ability to anchor itself and absorb the nutrients around it. For a plant to become fruitful, it must stay put. The roots give it that ability. Ano ang mangyayari sa tanim pag linipat-lipat mo ang tanim? Uy, mamamatay ang tanim. And it is true in business. Many people hindi mapakali. After trying one business, pag hindi nag-work, they move to another, they move to another, they move to another. And by doing so, they did not give their business a chance to become fruitful. As the plant stays put through its roots, it will now try to absorb the nutrients around it so that it can convert it to food that will fuel its growth. Business must be the same. As a business stays put and focused, it must now look at the opportunities around it and find a way to convert it to something profitable. As the tree continues to grow healthy, it will eventually produce fruits. Friends, fruits are product of abundance. They are naturally byproduct of healthy plants. So, pag healthy ang tanim, natural ang bunga. Alam ba nyo that as a farmer, I never focus on the fruit? Kasi naniniwala ako that if I can grow my plant healthy, the fruits will automatically come. The healthier the plants, the more fruits we will produce. And as I was reviewing all of this, I was reminded that a plant will bear fruit only in the proper season, sa tamang panahon. And as I was meditating on this truth, I realized something very important, that a plant will bear fruit regardless of the season. What does that mean? Alam ba nyo na ang tanim, hindi nyo naiintindihan na may El Nino or La Nina? Meaning, maski may drought around it, as long as the farmer can give it water, it will grow and produce fruit. Hindi rin niya alam na nagkaroon ng earthquake sa isang lugar o nagkaroon ng bagyo sa palibot niya. Alam niya pag tinulungan siya ng farmer, pwede pa rin siya mamunga. However, there will be times when the plant will experience severe calamity na pwede niyang ikamatay. How will it survive? Have you seen a picture like this? Yung puno na putol? Pero later, merong umusbong na bagong shoots. Ang tanong saan galing yung shoot na yon? As I was contemplating on my situation, I discovered that a plant's ability to survive calamities depends on the strength of its roots. So as I was learning all of these things, I decided to evaluate what we were doing so that we can apply the basics in order to advance. Let me now relate to you how the ways of the plant was able to help us survive the pandemic we are in. I realized that the abilities of a business decides how big it will grow and how profitable it will become. And also, I learned from the ways of the plant that a business capacity to survive calamities depends on the abilities it has developed. Realizing all this, I asked two essential questions. I asked myself, Dong, what resources do you have already? And what abilities have you developed? Pero di ba, walang silbi ang resources and abilities 
pag nawala na ang mga opportunities. Pero alam nyo ba na behind every calamity are opportunities waiting to be discovered. And so you ask me, what do you mean? Bakit hindi ko sila nakita before? Kasi noon, when everything was good, we were so busy trying to pursue opportunities that we thought were better. What did COVID-19 do? COVID-19 wiped out all those opportunities, so we were forced to go back to our roots. Many people were forced back to go home to their provinces. Many OFW were forced back to come back to the Philippines. E nung andito ka na, nung nasa probinsya ka na, what did you do? Diba? In order to survive, you ask yourself, ano bang meron dito? Anong bagay ang pwede kong simulan and pwede kong pagkitaan? Do you know that the Chinese word for crisis talk about this idea? The word for crisis in Chinese means danger and opportunity. When I realized this, na, naisip ko kaya pala sila mayaman. Because when they experience calamities, they immediately look for the opportunities that it brings. Last year, I was talking to one of my close business friend who was also Chinese. Alam mo, meron siyang sinabi sa akin that helped me navigate through COVID-19. Sabi niya, Dong, do you know that water will continue to flow even if something hinders it? You just have to look for where it went and then adjust. Galing, no? Sabi niya, opportunities never stop. It will continue to flow. Kailangan mo lang maintindihan kung saan siya pumunta and then adjust. One of the most important concepts that I learned during this pandemic is the idea that we need to adjust. Why do we need to embrace the idea of adjusting? You see, friends, we need to adjust to the opportunities around us because these opportunities will never adjust to us. Let me now share with you some of the good things that has happened in our farm as we apply the principles that I shared with you. Before COVID-19 came, we used to be a lettuce farm because these are the things we learn from supplying McDonald's from 2002 to 2010, and we were happy already. However, katulad ng sabi ko sa inyo, when the lockdown happened, nawala yung market namin because only restaurants and hotel would buy lettuce to feed the high-end customers and the tourists who comes. Pero nawala lahat yun, di ba? So I asked myself, Dong san sila napunta? These people, the high-end customers and some tourists will still eat. Saan sila napunta? Di ba they stayed home? However, as they stayed home, hindi lang lettuce ang gusto niyang kainin because they want variety. So I asked myself, Dong, what can you do with the abilities you have developed to serve this new market? And so we decided to try to grow other crops like kale, sugar beets, Japanese cucumber, spinach, leeks. And alam nyo, these are very difficult crops to grow. But I had no choice. I have to try. And what made it more complicated is because I want to grow it pesticide-free and free from synthetic fertilizer. Alam nyo, COVID-19 brought out the entrepreneur in us. And I believe this is what has happened to those who have succeeded through this crisis. Alam nyo, para sa akin, weird ang nangyayari today. I talked to many businessmen and some of them very, very excited. Sabi niya, Dong, COVID-19 is a blessing. On the other hand, some people are depressed because they feel COVID-19 robbed them of the good life that they had before. Now, bakit sila nag-struggle? Because they asked the wrong questions. The people in this group would ask, how do we find opportunities? And I believe 
it is a wrong question to ask. Instead, the question that we should ask is, how do we create opportunities? And this is the right question to ask during this time. Now, why do I say this? Because in my many years as an entrepreneur, I discovered that entrepreneurs do not look for opportunities to pursue. Instead, they create opportunities from the things they have already. If you study the lives of the great entrepreneurs, Henry C., Jack Ma, Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos, you will find that these people did not go out looking for the opportunity they have today. Instead, they spent their life creating the opportunities that have made them successful and rich. People today are saying that business has changed, and I beg to disagree. What has changed today are the tools that we use in business. Now you can meet people through Zoom. Now you can order through online malls. Now you don't have to travel far in order to get what you want because they will deliver it to your homes. If you really want to survive and thrive during this pandemic, I believe we need to go back to the old ways. You know the slide before you says the same old thinking, the same old result. And this is not necessarily bad. Ako, I use this idea. Remember I told you I went back to basics? I was telling myself, don't these principles made you succeed. Therefore, this will be the same principles that will make you grow and succeed in the future. I call myself a traditionalist. I believe that the old ways of doing business made the great entrepreneur successful. And because of this, I also believe that those principles will also make us successful in the future. And even the Bible talks about this. Jeremiah 6.16 says, Thus says the Lord, Stand by the way and see and ask for the ancient path, where the good way is, and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk in it. Bible talks about the ancient path. The word ancient in the Hebrew language does not mean old. It means eternal. Ibig sabihin, it was true in the past, it is true today, and it will be true in the future. What things have I taught you today? I have been teaching you the ways of the plant, which is ancient, that God decided from the day He created the world. So while the tools in business have changed, I wish you would spend time understanding the old ways of doing business. As I close, friends, I don't know your religion and I don't know how big your faith is, pero hindi siya importante. However, I would like you to try reading the Bible as a business book because it is just simply amazing. Kasi para sa akin, it is not just a spiritual book. It is a book that will guide us through life and will help us succeed in business. What's my reference? Isaiah 48 verse 17 says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. Friends, I'm a very practical person. I want to be able to do things that will bless me and make my life good. I have been reading the Bible every day, not because I want to become holy, holy, or spiritual, but because I want to become profitable, and I have found it in the ways of the Lord. A message ko sana para sa mundo is that I have found a better way of doing business, and I found it in the ways of the Lord. I would like to help. Alam mo, ang daming taong nahihirapan today. And I wish I could teach all Filipinos what I know 
so that they too can experience the fruitful life that God gave us. Because of this, while stuck at home because of the pandemic, I created a program which I called The Entrepreneur's Journey to Fruitfulness. It is a series of Zoom-based webinar that I would like to offer people so that I can pass on to them what I have learned and discovered. It will be a program that will start from June 4 hanggang July 2, every Friday evening from 7 p.m., and I will share five important lessons that will hopefully teach you how to start a business, how to grow it, and how to make it profitable. But one of the most important lessons in this series is the last one, which is entitled The Essential Traits of an Entrepreneur. I discovered na hindi lang skills ang kailangan natin matutunan, and skills we learn in school and training. Importante din matutunan natin ang tamang pag-uugali ng isang entrepreneur because ang ugali ng tao ang magpapasaksid sa kanila.